Okay, so uh, this is the second law of problems, part one. Number four. And it says that um, saturated, well, I guess it doesn't say anything specific about what the material is, but saturated liquid um, goes to saturated vapor. at a constant pressure and temperature. Um, the only work done is the work of expansion. Um, And first, uh, it says derive expressions for Q and W um, that, oh, and uh, it says that it's a mass M. Um, but derive expressions for Q and W that use only uh, properties you can look up in a table. And then second, uh, show that the process is internally reversible. that the process is internally reversible. Um, okay, well, for part A, uh, the, the work of expansion, we know the expression for that is the integral of P dV. Um, And we have a mass m, so this is, you know, you can think of it as p times m times dv, little v. Uh, pressure is constant, so you can write this as, uh, let's say, mp integral of d little v. Um, and that just says that work is equal to uh, m, p, you integrate little dv, and you get a change in specific volume. So uh, those are those specific volumes at the two, um, at instant one and instant two, you can look those up in the table. And uh, then to come up with an expression for q, um, we can use the first law that says the change in total internal energy is equal to Q uh, minus W. Um, the change in internal energy is M times the change in specific internal energy. So that's something you can look up in the table. And that's equal to Q minus 
mp change in specific volume. And so q is equal to um, m times the change in specific internal energy plus m times p times the change in specific volume. So those are the two expressions for the work and the heat. And none of this was substance specific, so you could, um, you know, you could look that up for whatever substance. But now the harder part of this question is show that this is internally reversible. Um, Okay, so uh, what do we know about an internally reversible process? Uh, we know that the change in entropy is equal to the integral of the heat added to the system divided by the temperature all around the boundary plus sigma. So this is for the actual process. And if this is internally reversible, if we want this to be internally reversible, uh, this has to be zero. So that's kind of our starting point, or uh, I guess uh, that's what we're trying to show. Um, we could rewrite this as um, for our problem. Jesus, what the? I need a new computer so bad. That's not that bad. <laughs> Only completely illegible. <laughs> I just restarted it. Oh, oh. Oh, it's gone. God, that's so frustrating. Let's pause this for a second. Okay, for our process. Um, what this means is that we want to show that the change in entropy is equal to Q over that fixed uh, constant temperature. And we have an expression for uh, Q from above. Uh, so M delta U plus MP delta V all divided by T. Um, and so we can rewrite this as T delta S is equal to M times the change in U plus MP times the change in V. Okay, so this is what we want to show. Uh, 
Um, so I put it in that form that sort of suggests where we're going. We're going to um, we're going to try to derive this from the TDS equations. So we'll start with TDS is equal to um, oh, let me uh, actually let me change. You know, you can take this one more step down. Uh, so this is T times the change in specific entropy is equal. So I'm just dividing both sides by M, and this is equal to the change in U plus P times the change in V. So a lot of the work I've already done in just deciding what we need to show here. Um, but so we'll start with TDS is equal to DU plus P DV. Bless you. And then uh, at that point, you just have to remember what's what's constant. Um, so if you integrate everything, TDS is equal to integral of DU plus integral of PDV. Um, these two things are constant. And so you can pull those outside the integral and you get uh, T times the integral of DS is equal to integral of DU plus P times the integral of DV. And so T times the change in specific entropy is equal to the change in specific internal energy plus P times the change in uh, specific volume. That one's pretty different from the other stuff in that, uh, in that group of problems, but that's the idea. That is the form we wanted, right? Yeah. Any questions about that? Okay, so now uh, we're getting into uh, the second law. For control volumes. And it's a pretty similar idea to the second law. Um, or for, uh, sorry, pretty similar to the first law for control volumes. Um, so the change in total entropy with respect to time in the control volume is equal to uh, all the um, heat transfers. And we're talking about the rate of heat transfer at any part on the boundary divided by the temperature where that uh, temperature is, well, where that heat is being transferred. Positive is coming into the system. And then, so, uh, if we weren't doing control volumes, we would have this plus, like, sigma naught, the, the entropy product produced. Um, but since this is a control volume, we have to consider the entropy that's being carried in at the inlet and carried out at the exit. So we have uh, mi dot times the specific entropy at the inlet minus me dot times the specific entropy at the exit, and then plus our rate of entropy production. And this has to be positive. 
or zero if it's perfectly efficient. Um, if this is happening at steady state, Entropy is, um, is a property, so steady state means that the entropy uh, doesn't change, so ds dt is zero. And also, just like in the first law, uh, mi dot has to be equal to me dot, and we can just call it m dot if it's in steady state. Um, and so uh, you can look up the entropy if you have the um, if you know the state at the inlet and you know the state at the exit you can just look those up in a table um, also uh, if you don't have a table for it but it's an ideal gas or incompressible um, and it's in steady state, then uh, this is just the change from the inlet to the exit of the entropy. And so you can use the equations that we've been using for calculating change in entropy. Okay. Um, So here's the first example. Uh, so let's say we have a turbine in steady state. Uh, at the inlet, it's steam. The pressure is 30 bar. Uh, temperature one. The temperature at the inlet is 400 degrees Celsius. And the speed is 160 meters per second. And then at the exit, it's a saturated vapor. The pressure is atmospheric. The temperature is 100 degrees Celsius. And the speed is 100 meters per second. Um, So say we're given that uh, the rate of heat transfer per mass is negative 22.6 times 10 to the third joules per kilogram. And that the outer surface has a temperature of 350 Kelvin. Uh, and we want to calculate what's the rate of entropy production. Uh, Q dot. That um, we're doing, so this has to be watts per kilogram. For the heat transfer. Okay, does it make sense that, so what's it saying if that's negative? Uh, that's saying this is heat loss from the turbine.
Okay, it's in steady state. So we start with this. Uh, the MI and ME are just M. Um, and steady state means that there's no uh, change in the entropy and the control volume. So uh, we'll start out with this. And then everything's given uh, per mass. So let's divide everything by mass. Um, so zero is equal to uh, the sum of all the Q dots over M divided by the temperature where that transfer happens plus SI minus SE plus entropy production per mass. Um, the Q dot over M is given, so negative uh, 22.6 times 10 to the third. Quick question. Yeah. I see you're dividing through by M, but it's, an, uh, it's still a mass uh, rate change, like M dot. It, it is. So it's going to be like SI uh, dot or something? So the is that's a good question. Um, Funny, all my notes are in jewels and stuff. So what is going on there? Oh, okay. Uh, let's see. So there is a note in here. Um, or, or are you just dividing everything by M dot and then changing it into two? Mm -hmm. So the question is, what was the what was intended to be the so this thing that I sort of just cavalierly changed? The question is whether that was supposed to be joules and this is supposed to be like over some time interval. Yeah, I suppose Q dot over M dot, then you get joules over kilograms. So if it is Right, if it's this, um, So then if, uh, oh God. Hmm. 
Hmm. So what is Yeah, so there's got to be some relationship there between the M dot and the M that everything's steady state. M dot. Um, so if this is over some fixed amount of time. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. If it's, if Steady state, then your relation between Q dot over M dot should be equivalent to mm -hmm. Q over M. Right. You know what? I'm not gonna I'm not gonna try to think through this here. I'm gonna just mess something up. Let me let's just set this example aside. I'm gonna do a different example. I'll get this straightened out and we'll just do it another day next time or whatever. Okay, we'll come back to this. Let me do another example. Okay, so let's say that uh, you, so this is a nozzle or a diffuser. We don't know which. Um, we're going to assume that it's steady state, that there's no heat transfer. Um, no work. It's rigid. Um, and no change in potential energy. And um, we're going to think of there just being a state one and a state two. Um, let's say it's state one, we have steam. at uh, 60 bar, moving with a speed of 30 meters per second at a temperature of 400 degrees Celsius. And then at state two, we don't know whether this is before or after. Uh, we have a saturated vapor. Um, at a pressure of 30 bar, let's say. We don't know the speed. Um, you want to calculate uh, what's the speed at state two. And then we want to figure out whether this is a nozzle or a diffuser. Okay, so the idea is that a nozzle and a diffuser, uh, it's, it's really the same structure. It's just a matter of whether you have a higher velocity and a lower enthalpy on the inlet or at the exit, you know. Um, so one of these two things is happening before the other one, okay? Uh, and so um, we're going to use the first law for control volumes to figure out the speed, and then we're going to use the second law for control volumes to see if the entropy production is positive or negative, which, which 
you know, with whichever assumption we make, let's say we'll assume that it's a not a home, you know, and if the entropy production comes out negative, then we know we assumed wrong and it's actually going the other direction. Okay. So, um, for part A, uh, to calculate that speed, we're going to start with the um, first law for control volumes. So, DE DT for the control volume. is equal to Q dot for the control volume minus W dot plus its steady state, so M dot times the quantity HI plus VI squared over 2 plus GZI minus M dot times the quantity HE plus VE squared over 2 plus GZE. Steady state, so this goes away. Um, and then uh, there's no heat transfer, no work, no change in potential energy, so those cancel. Uh, we can divide you know, so here we have zero is equal to uh, M dot times the quantity HI plus VI squared over two minus M dot times the quantity HE plus VE squared over two. And we can divide both sides by M dot and we get uh, H I minus H E is equal to V E squared over two minus V I squared over two. And we have enough information to look all these up. Uh, we um, know the pressure and the temperature at state one for the superheated vapor. For state two, it's saturated. Um, so for state one, uh, so I'm assuming for now that this is the inlet. I'm assuming that state two is the exit. Um, and if you look up the enthalpy at the inlet, you get 3177.2 times 10 to the third, uh, that's joules per kilogram. And at the exit, it's a saturated uh, vapor at, um, anybody have a table in front of them? Can you, yeah, that'd be great. So uh, it's a saturated vapor, um, water vapor at 30 bar. Oh, uh, yes. Two eight zero four point two times ten to the third, and then um, this is what we're trying to calculate. Uh, what was the speed at the thirty meters per second at the inlet? So 
30 squared over 2. Um, so v squared is equal to uh, 2 times the quantity 3177.2 E3 minus 2804.2 E3. Uh, plus 900. And uh, someone with a calculator, can you calculate what you get here for VE? Uh, really? That's pretty slow. I changed it on the fly because the first numbers I put in had were 900 meters per second. Oh, what did you get? 864.2. So uh, remember to multiply by 10 to the third. And then 900 doesn't have anything times 10 to the third. Yeah, I'm getting the same. 800 some? I got 864.2. Okay, 864.2. Okay. Um, all right, so with the assumption we've made that this is a nozzle, uh, it starts out at 30 meters per second and ends at 864 meters per second. So now we're going to use the second law of thermo to see if this is possible. Okay, the whole idea is we don't know the flow direction right now. That's right. That's right. Um, so the second law of thermo for control volumes says the SDT is equal to the sum of all the heat transfer over the temperature where it's transferred all around the boundary plus this is steady state so those m the mi and me are just m dot uh, si minus uh, m dot se plus sigma for the control volume There's no heat transfer, so this is zero. It's steady state, so this is zero. And so we get zero is equal to, um, if I divide everything by, uh, by M, we get S at the inlet minus S at the exit plus sigma dot over M. Um, and now we can just, uh, well, I guess I rewrote it, uh, SE minus SI is equal to sigma dot over M. And now we can look up these entropy values. Um, at the exit, that's the one I used before, so I have that one. That's 
6.838 times 10 to the third uh, joules per kilogram. And can you look up the uh, specific entropy for the saturated vapor at 30 bar? Saturated vapor is 6.1869. Kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. 6.187, let's say, times 10 to the third. Um, and that's equal to sigma dot over M. Uh, you can see that this is positive. Um, so our assumption was right. It was a nozzle. Um, and based on the first law for control volumes, you know, um, this would have worked either direction. Uh, you know, it, you would do that calculation the same way, whichever assumption you made, um, everything would work out fine. But this is how we showed that it would be impossible for this to be a uh, diffuser with those values. Yeah, for an actual system. Right. Just to go back again, mm -hmm. the same issue I had with the other one, I was a little, a little confused again. Okay. Yeah, uh, at the bottom. For entropy, because you still have it in the form of a rate, yet we're using specific entropy values. Uh, yeah, the uh, the rate comes fr in this, it comes from the M dots. Yeah, yeah, well, I should say, but you divide by M, so it's trying to, again, be like entropy per second. <laughs> oh, God, not this again. I keep doing that. Good Lord. Or is it just because it's steady state so you can divide by M dot as opposed to divide by M? Um, well, in this case, yeah. So in this case, actually, it's pretty simple. The uh, So we can just divide, in this case, we can just divide by M dot. And, and we don't really care about what that M dot means or anything. It's just we know that's positive. So we're all we're trying to do is show that that sigma CV has to be positive, yeah, yeah. you know. So this one, thank goodness, is not a problem. But that other one, I need to think about a little. Any other questions? Okay, so I'm. Uh, I guess next class. I'll, I'll do that other example. I'll get that all straightened out with the dots and whatever. Um, but I, um, besides that, this is the end of the second law of thermodynamics. Hey, we survived. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so what I want to do is... Uh, the same thing that I did at the end of the first law of thermodynamics, just go back, refresh our memory, with, do like sort of an outline of the topics. Um, I think it's important in this class particularly because this is, I think of uh, sort of engineering classes at the extremes can sort of be divided into kind of concept classes and kind of inventory classes where they're just throwing a lot of stuff at you, you know. Statics is like the other extreme, like it's kind of like one or two ideas and you just do them over and over and learn. This is like a lot of different stuff. So like to me, for my brain, it makes sense to keep sort of outlining it to yourself. So that's what I want to do. Yeah, especially with entropy, it's just kind of like abstract. Um, uh-huh, yeah. So, uh, I don't know if we'll finish this outline. Well, actually, let's just let's take the quiz now. Um, I'll go through the example next class, and then we'll go through the outline. The test will be up through all the second law stuff. Uh, so, uh, yeah, let's do that. I almost leaned up to you on doing the quiz. <laughs> you what? <laughs> you talking and telling. <laughs>